Good morning. Good morning. Looking at Psalm 119. We'll read the whole thing this morning. That's the longest book in the Bible. Psalm 119, and I want to read this from the Passion Bible. You're only truly blessed when you walk in total integrity, walking in the light of God's Word. What joy overwhelms everyone who keeps the ways of God, those who seek Him as their heart's passion. They'll never do what's wrong, but will always choose the paths of the Lord. God has prescribed the right way to live, obeying His law with our hearts. How I long for my life to bring you glory as I follow each and every one of your holy precepts. Then I will never be ashamed, for I take strength from all your commandments. I will give you my thanks from my heart of love and truth. And every time I learn more of your righteous judgments, I will be faithful to what your word reveals. So Lord, don't ever give up on me. <laughs> Lord, I'm working at it. I recognize that I don't get it right every time, but I'm growing and I'm working and I'm trying and I'm, I'm seeking your ways. And as I learn more about you, I am trying more and more to be like you. That's the life, Lord, that you bless. So, Lord, don't ever give up on me. And you know, God is faithful. That's who He is. That's not just one of His characteristics. God can't be anything but faithful. And He's faithful to us. He doesn't give up on us. He keeps reaching out. He keeps showing us more and more how to be like Him. He keeps trying to testing us. He keeps stretching us. He keeps helping us to become His kingdom witness. So He doesn't give up on us. Wow! A God that never gives up on us. And a God that not only never gives up on us, He gives us the guidance so we can live a blessed life. Lord, we thank You. We thank you that you came and you died on the cross and you rose again not only to show that there is life after death and there is eternal life but to show us the way. Lord, we give you praise. We give you praise because of who you are. We give you praise because you have shown us the way. You have made the way possible that we can live a life that is blessed, a life that is joyous, a life that is that we can walk in peace with you and peace with ourselves. So, Lord, we just ask that as we gather together, Lord, another piece of what we are needing to walk in that blessed life will be revealed to us. And, Lord, we will seize. We will seize that word from you. We will seize that inspiration from your Holy Spirit. Lord, our hearts will be even more molded to be like you. As we walk in your ways. 
We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Would you stand?
into God's Word today. And uh, if you have your Bibles with you, and I'll tell you right now, the whole passage that I'm referring to today in Scripture is much too big to put on the screen. So uh, you're going to need to do a little look on in the Bible for your own. We're going to specifically focus in on two verses. But uh, the whole passage is Luke chapter 1, verses 57 through 80. I've, I've titled this message, <clears throat> Where the Rays of Heaven Sunrise Reach. Where the rays of heaven sun. You know, I've been seeing a lot of pictures lately uh, on uh, Facebook and different sites and so forth on the internet showing sunrises and sunsets. Now, I, I don't know really what all the significance of that is at this particular moment, but sunrises and sunsets can be beautiful. Amen? And, uh, and we love to see those kinds of events. But we're going to talk about sunrise today. And we're going to pull this message, as I said, from the first chapter of Luke. And I want to, I want to say this to you about that whole portion of Scripture. That whole portion of Scripture is absolutely chock full of the miraculous. Amen? How many of you believe God has got miracles? Anybody think that's, that was, you know, for a certain time, it's gone, and it's done? I don't. I believe He's the same today as He ever was. I believe He can do even more miraculous things today than He ever did. And furthermore, I believe He wants to. Amen? He wants to. So I want us to think about this together this morning. And let's just, let's just take a moment and kind of do a little small digesting of one part of this. And uh, as we talk about, for instance, as an example, that this miraculous, the, the angel Gabriel, he appeared to Zacharias and to Mary, telling them both of impending births. Births that were not the normal. They were miraculous. And Zacharias, he did like a lot of us probably would do in the same situation. He had his doubts. And have you ever doubted? And have you ever questioned? He doubted the word of the angel. And what happened? It left him speechless. He verbally could not communicate. And later when the baby was born, Zacharias calls the name John, which comes in verse 63, which is in obedience to the command of the angel in verse 13. And Zacharias' speech is then restored. And he lifts his voice out, and for what? To praise the Lord. To give glory to God. Now in this incredible paragraph of praise, this, this old saint of God glorifies the Lord in verse 68. He speaks of the coming Messiah. He gives a prophecy concerning His Son in verse 76 through 78. And concludes by mentioning the day spring from on high in verse 78 and 79. Now the word day spring here is what I want us to focus on because that, that word just really had me a little bit puzzled as I began to try to deal with this and look it up and try to figure out exactly what that means. And it literally means sunrise. Sunrise, And this is a direct reference to the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the sunrise of our lives. Can you say amen to that? Amen. Sunrise. Sunrise always has a way of giving us hope. It tells us the beginning of something new. 
Each day we have the sunrise take place and it, it, it helps us to believe that, hey, today starting brand new, it's going to be a better day today than it was yesterday. We have hope within them. And Jesus is pictured as a sun rising upon a world that is trapped in darkness. Think about it. I want us to think upon these two passages, these two particular verses, verses 78 and verse 79. Because these verses tell us about the rays of heaven's sunrise and what those rays of sunrise accomplish in our lives. We're told about three particular areas of life that are dramatically changed by the warmth of the rays of heaven's sunrise. And I want us to deal with them here in the next few moments. So allow me to take a few minutes to show you what the Word spoke to my heart in and through this particular situation. The first point that I'm going to make today is in that Jesus brings the light of liberty to those in darkness. What's liberty mean to you? Anyone? Freedom. Freedom. What? Freedom. Freedom. Okay. Anyone else? Peace. Peace. Liberty. The light of liberty. Think about this for a moment. Jesus came to a world that was bound in spiritual darkness. Now if you're bound, literally or spiritually, you need that freedom that was mentioned a while ago. Jesus came to a world that was bound in spiritual darkness. The Jewish religion had, had gone downhill until it was nothing more than a religion of, of formalism and legalism. Do's and don'ts. And mostly don'ts. We see this today even in a lot of places. We see that a lot of times in some of our own churches. Pastor Diane and I watched through the years, our early years together, and when I first came into the Pentecostal faith, and it had come through a period and was still trying to find its way uh, through that period of there was more don'ts than there were do's. And then they wondered why people weren't getting excited about serving the Lord. Maybe some of you have been there. Don't, 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 don't. After a while you come to the point you think, well, what can I do, do, do? I can't find it. But think about this. The spiritual aspect of their religion had long passed away during this period. And it was a dark spiritual day when Jesus came into the world. A dark spiritual day. Notice that God did not send His Son into the middle of a great spiritual revival. But He sent Him to those who were floundering around in the darkness. They were groping their way in spiritual darkness. However, many saw the light of Jesus and they were led out of that darkness. Think of Matthew. Think of Peter. Think of Andrew and James and John. And the impact that it made upon their lives. Remember Mary Magdalene. Remember the demonic Gadarene 
Remember even Mary, his mother, Jesus' mother, Luke, in Luke 1, 46 through 47, and all the others, many others, more than we could possibly remember in this moment, who were delivered from darkness by the light of the life of the sunrise of heaven. Who is Jesus? You know something? Things that have changed a whole lot. Think about it. In fact, I found myself wondering about whether or not the world may not be in a darker spiritual condition today than it was then. It's not easy today. And I'm not saying that to put us in a position of saying, oh, woe is me, you know, we can't. No, I'm just simply pointing out the fact things haven't improved in a lot of ways. But, recognize the fact that even with that darkness, we do have the opportunity of more light today. For instance, think of all of the Bibles that we have available to us today. The Word of God. They didn't have any of that. We have Bibles. We may not be so good at using them or reading them, but they're there. They're all around us. Think of the churches. There's a lot of churches today. Unfortunately, a lot of them aren't very full, but we have them. And yet we still have darkness. And millions upon millions are trapped in that darkness today. Why? Because men love darkness more than they love the light of the Lord. Think of it. Men need the light of Jesus to shine in their lives to make them be free. Amen? If, amen? Amen. Go to sleep on me. Men need the light of Jesus to be free. They need the light of Jesus to shine upon their lives. The darkness of this world is plain to see both in the sins of mankind and in the sins of even within the church today. But the good news is that not everyone is trapped in the darkness. Not everyone. Do you remember the day the light of God shined in the darkness of your life? Do you remember the day when the Holy Spirit got a hold of your heart? And did something fantastic. You found yourself reaching out to the God of heaven. You found yourself feeling and sensing the presence of the Lord. You found yourself being washed in the precious blood of Jesus, the Lamb of God. And being set free from the bondage of sin that held you fast. Do you remember that day? Do you remember what it was like to see yourself as you really were in that moment? And know that God offered you light. God offered you hope. God offered you life. Life everlasting. You see, the good news today is that Jesus came to bring light into our lives. 
That was his purpose. That was his reason for coming. That was the reason why he loved you so much. He wanted to bring you his light and life. And set you free. You see, we don't have to stumble around in the darkness. We can walk in the light and in the light of Christ. It's available. It's here. It's ours for the asking. And for anyone else who might ask, it's available. Jesus Christ came to bring light into this world. And with that light comes liberty and freedom, peace, comfort, security, even in the middle of the darkness that surrounds us. There's a way. There's a way. One of the wonderful things about the light of Jesus is the batteries never go dead. He shines. He shines. And He never stops. He wants to shine in your life today. Secondly, Jesus brings the light of life to those under the curse of death. The Bible tells us here that Jesus came to bring His light into the very shadows of death itself. You know, for a lot of people, death is a fearful thing. I think oftentimes we find ourselves in our younger years being more questioning and fearful of death than we do in our latter years. But there's a part of that mystery of death that grips us at some point in time. Because all of us live under the shadow of it. Every one of us. The fact is, if the Lord doesn't come, we will all face death one day. So the bottom line is this. None of us Hear me, none of us is more than a heartbeat away from eternity at any given moment. I've said that to you so many times in so many ways. None of us have the guarantee of a plate of spaghetti at promise of today. None of us. At any moment, we can step across the threshold from this life into eternity. At any time. But listen to me. We need not fear it. For the believer, there should be no fear in that. We must always remember that the Lord Jesus faced death for us. And that by raising from the dead, He conquered death and He did it on our behalf. Can you say amen? On your behalf, on my behalf. He conquered death. He did what we couldn't do because of His great love. So we don't need to fear death because death is nothing more than a doorway through which we pass from this world into the presence of Jesus Christ and see Him as He is. In all His glory. In all His love. 
Death is not meant to be feared. It's kind of for some people like the shadows in the darkness. They're always evasive. They're always feeling that fear and that hesitation. But for the child of God, that darkness has all been dissipated. We face the light of the Lord. And there is no fear in any of that. You see, when death comes to a child of God, it isn't a monster to be feared. It isn't something to dread or be intimidated with. It's a friend to be in place. The one who believes with Jesus. All of eternity. No more sickness, no more pain. A glorified body. A body that's made and equipped for all of eternity. It never wears out. It never causes a problem. Dennis has been having trouble in his neck and shoulder for the last few weeks. When he goes into the presence of Jesus, that's all going to be gone. He'll never suffer that ever again. Some of you here today, you have your struggles physically in your bodies. When you pass from this life into the presence of the Lord, that's a done deal. Hallelujah. You won't have to worry to feel that pain and that struggle anymore. We don't need to fear it. We need to embrace it. Now, having said that, I want to emphasize here that doesn't mean that we just sit around with our arms folded and moaning and groaning and say, come quickly, Lord Jesus, I'm tired of this. I want out of here. We're supposed to occupy until He comes. And He'll help us do that. But we welcome the promises of God that will hold us and keep us for all of eternity. We don't fear death. It's something that takes us from this place into the presence of the Lord. Notice the attitude of the Apostle Paul when he faced his hour, his moment of death in 2 Timothy. He described his death as a departure. This is a very expressive word, departure. It was used by armies when it was time to take up their tents and move on. We're going to depart from this place and go to the next. Sailors used it to refer to loosing the moorings of their ship and setting sail. We're going to depart. Travelers used it to refer to the end of a journey when the horses were put into the stable. Departure. Those in the legal professions used it to refer to the freeing of prisoners. Departure. Paul doesn't face his death with a spirit of fear because Paul knows there is more to come. More to come after he passes through death and his shadow, and he steps into eternity with the Lord. Believe me, 
Trust me. One thing you can trust me on. If you know Jesus, you can count on the fact it will be better on the other side. And if you're still not convinced, just remember how death reacted around the Lord Jesus. Jesus attended, in the Word of God, we're told that Jesus attended four funerals. Jairus' daughter, the widow of Nan, son, Lazarus, and his own bearer. While here on earth, and each time he changed the funeral into a time of rejoicing. He raised the dead. He brought them into life. Life everlasting. Everywhere the light of life traveled, death had to go. There was no options. It was absolute. If you are in Jesus today, death has no claim or hold on you. You were equipped and formed to live forever. And with Jesus as your Savior, you will see the reality of that forever. Jesus conquered death for you forever. Think of it. For you, forever, Jesus conquered death. We may lay down these temporary bodies, but something better is waiting on the other side. It's about new glorified bodies. Hallelujah. I'm ready. So Jesus Christ, one, He brings the light of life to those under death, or I'm sorry, in darkness. And two, He brings the light of life to those under the sentence of death. And the third point that I'll make today is this. He brings the light of leadership to those without direction. None of us know how to walk for God as we should. None of us. Try as we might, desire as we might, we don't know. Left to ourselves and our own devices, we merely tend to wander farther away from God, like is talked about in Isaiah chapter 53. In fact, the Bible teaches us that following our own ways leads nowhere but to death. But Jesus came to give us the light of His guidance. He wants you to know how. Follow me. Follow me. When we received Him as our Lord and Savior, we were given three heavenly helpers that make the difference between us knowing where we are going and us just wandering around aimlessly lost in the darkness. First, He gave us a new heart. Jesus made us a new creation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 tells us about that. He gave us a heart that is hungry for Him. In Colossians. Think of it. He gave you a heart hungry for Him. Secondly, He gave us the Holy Spirit. And the longer we serve Him and the more we continue on in this life, I think the more we can begin to appreciate the wonderful presence of the Holy Spirit. We depend upon it. I depend upon it. The Spirit of God who dwells in the heart of every believer gives direction and leadership as we go through life. 
Think of it. No more are we left to the devices of our flesh. No more are we to be pulled this way and that way by the enemy of our soul. Because we have the Holy Spirit taking our hand and saying, Here, I got you. Come with me. Come with me. You see, the Spirit knows the mind of the Father. And He guides us in all the ways that please the Lord. And thirdly, He gave us the Word of God. Right here. The Word of God. When we were saved, the Lord gave us a heart to follow Him. He gave us the Spirit within us to guide us. And then He gave us His perfect Word to teach us of His ways and His will for our lives. Can you say amen? Can you say thank you, Jesus? The Word of God will never lead a saint of God astray. Did you hear that? The Word of God will never lead you astray. It will always supply you with the guidance needed to get us safely home to heaven. Know it, love it, and follow it. So we don't have to wander around. Not in the dark, but we have instead the tools and the help we need to walk in the Lord's light day by day by day by day. And that, my friends, is the place of our greatest blessing to be living and walking in the light of the Lord. So let me bring this to a close. What is the goal of all this work of the rays of heaven's sunrise in our lives? What? What is the goal? It's a goal to bring us to a place of perfect peace. You see, God wants you and I to have peace in our lives. And the reality is, we desire that peace. It's all the junk going on that gets us so worn out and so worn down. God wants you to have peace. He wants you to have peace about your spiritual condition. Because He doesn't want you living in darkness. He wants you living in the light of His love. He wants you to have peace about death so that we are not afraid of that day so that we can face it in the confidence that He has conquered death for each and for every one of us. Some will bypass that step. They'll be alive when the trumpet sounds and they're going to be instantly transported from this life into the presence of the Lord. Sounds pretty good to me. And I believe that it could take place at any time. What we're seeing around us in this moment, I think, is just more of a reassuring of how this world is going in a wrong direction and how much it desperately needs Jesus. At some point, that's all going to be finished. And the trumpet's going to sound. And if you know Jesus and you're alive, whoosh, it's done me. You used to sing that. We used to sing a hymn back in the States. I don't know if it's here. It's just changed in the twinkling of an eye. Trumpets shall sound. And the dead shall be raised. Changed. In 
the joint like one. Oh, well. It's coming. It's coming. And there could well be people in this room right now that experience that kind of change. Either way, though, by the way of the grave or by the trumpet, the end result is going to be the same. In fact, the word tells us that when that trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ shall be raised first. And then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the air. We're talking about unbelievably fantastic event. When's it going to happen? Anytime. We just got to be So he wants us to have peace. He wants us to have a peace that says he will never leave us nor forsake us in the meantime. As long as we're walking in this world today, Jesus has promised every believer that he will not leave them, he will not forsake them. He'll be with you. And that he will guide you safely through the valleys and the hard places of life. Peace is a precious gift, saints. He said, Peace is a precious gift. A couple free of you come. It's precious. It's a wonderful gift. It's so precious in fact that it literally passes all of our understanding. You can't understand it. It's beyond you. It's far more than anything you can compare it to. But the beauty of it is God didn't ask you to understand it. He asked you to receive it and walk in it. Glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. I don't know where some of you are spiritually in this message. Whether you might be in darkness, whether you might be afraid of the future, or unsure about today. But I do know that wherever you are in this moment, there is help and there is hope all in the person of heaven's sunrise, and that is Jesus. No question, no hesitation. There is help in Jesus Christ. All you've got to do is come to Him. All you've got to do is say, Lord, here I am. You. I need you in this moment. I've got areas in my life that I'm struggling with. The Lord, right in that, this moment, I know you're my answer. You're my everything. Touch me with your love and with your presence. I'm going to ask you to do something that I often don't do. And I probably need to get back to that point. If this morning you can be honest with yourself, you and God, and you would say, you know, there's things in my life today that I'm struggling with. And I need the light of heaven's sunrise to touch my heart in this moment. I believe Jesus is my answer. 
He is my everything. And I need Him in this moment. Like never before. If that's you today, would you stand right where you are? Confession of faith. You're not making confession of worthlessness or anything like that. You're simply saying, Lord, in every aspect of my life today, even the difficult ones that I'm now facing, I recognize you as my everything. You as my source. I need your light to shine on me. In this moment. Before we pray. We're asking us to leave us. Let's just get a hold of the Lord this morning.
Jesus' precious name. And everyone agreed? Amen. Amen. Praise God. 